Well, hello, I'm Mike Wolf. I work for IBM. Um, I work on their power systems primarily. And what we've been seeing is people get access to power systems and they're having some trouble to install it. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's out there that people are interested in and can get. How do you get access to these? How do you get them installed? Um, I probably need that slide for more. So with Open Power, that's a new initiative that's been coming out. There's openpower.org. You can go out there, become a member. You can look at their summit, see their slides, see where they're going. It's systems and it's I.O., it's memory, it's a bunch of things. So you're seeing a bunch more systems coming out. Um, uh, producers like Wistron, Supermicro, Tie-In are starting to make um, power-based boxes. There's also, um, we're coming out with Capi cards for various accelerators and things like this to help you get some of these functions um, done better. So like with Capi, there's some 20 solutions. Um, it, it'll show you at ibm.biz.powercapi. Um, there's graphics analysis, um, some erasure code accelerators for Hadoop, things like that. Um, so you're interested in this, how do you want to get it? Well, you can go buy the systems. They tend to be pricey yet. Um, I don't think the open power systems are, are yet down to the price or just the guy buys when they have it in his home and stuff. We might see something cheaper coming down the road, some reference platforms, etc. but right now, so it's a bit expensive. So if you have a project and you want it to run in power, there's a couple ways we can do this. One is, is at IBM, we're very interested in having projects running on our hardware. So um, there's certain ones that uh, we will care enough about that perhaps we'll get you a system. So if you contact Jeff Scheel or myself at IBM, uh, explain your project, explain your needs, uh, we can work it that way. The other way to get it, uh, the more common way to get it, is we've been working with universities to have systems set up. Uh, the one I'm most familiar with is Oregon State. They have um, a, a mix where you could get a partition on a machine or more often now they're starting to move to where you just get an instance. Um, another one is if you're in South America or closer to there, you can look at Unicamp. And then there's also one at the University of Brno. Dan knows more about that. Is that just called the University of Brno? Uh, Berlin University of Technology. So. Okay. And then at, at some point I get the um, sign-in sheet. So on the slide, um, it gave the URL for where you go. Um, the other two run the same. You basically introduce yourself on there, introduce what the project is. Um, it comes back to IBM, you get a sponsor, you get the okay, and they set you up. So when you're asking for the project, you'd also ask, you know, like how much processing power, how much memory, how much disk, anything like that. And they'll set up the instance and then at, at end, um, which distro do you want? Now for the for these, they're, they're going to be running the community ones. So, you know, the, the various Fedora flavors are out there. Typically, they're configuring the latest one. Not too many people ask for a older Fedora. So that's the easiest way to get access. And then if you're having problems, uh, you can talk to the university. And then if they can't get you fixed up, uh, we typically get you fixed up. But let's say you get a system, you buy it on your own, or we help supply one for your project. You get it all racked up, you turn on the power, well now what? How do I get a console? How do I start um, getting this installed? So the big thing about these are, is there isn't your typical ethernet or your serial connector on the back. Uh, we'll send you out an adapter, it should be in the box, so that's one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it is um, go through the ops panel and um, on the slides, basically, and it's, it's on some IBM Fixed Central uh, sites as well, you can um, get instructions for doing this and what are the, the, standard, pa or the standard IP addresses. Because they, they come with two of them and, and one of them is, is just the 169.254.2.140. You set up a computer on the, the subnet of that. 
and um, then you can talk to it directly. Once you get into there, if you're using an IBM Power 8, uh, we call them our Toletas, etc. You have an FSP in there. That's one way to do it. Uh, if you get the open power ones, you get the open BMC. It's a little bit different, but either way, you're in there, and then um, you can go in and you can change the IP addresses, which is what most will do. Get it on your subnet, and then while you're in there, there's going to be an IPMI account, and that's one where you're going to want to set the password because you're going to use IPMI later then to connect to these. So if you don't want to hook up your um, computer directly to it, on the IBM Power 8, you have our traditional little op panel. So when you look at the front of the server, there'll be a little green screen, has a little button by it. You press the button, and you get this little panel comes out. It has, uh, I think, two white buttons on either side, and then the middle one. And you can do it there. So now there, it, it, it's a lot bigger of a hunt. You need a couple of chickens. You make a sacrifice, all that stuff. But no, it, on the slide I have it, and it's in small print. It goes through the steps. I've mailed them to Peter. I can get them to other people. They're out on IBM Central. But it talks you through going through those menus and finding the addresses. So on each of these boxes, there's actually two ports on the back, they'll be labeled HMC, HMC1, HMC2, they'll have an address hooked to them. And these are things you're talking to. So once you get the address, you can take and plug in to those. Now, um, you get this weird thing where it'll be HMC1, but you gotta remember now that's your ETH0, HMC2 will be ETH1, and get them configured up. And then you can get them on the network. You're looking for like settings for display um, settings. And I only showed it. One with Linux. Just need to be down to like 1024 by 768, maybe. Uh, lost my slides here. Sorry about this. So, yeah, then you get the IP addresses set up. You've got your IPMI password set up, so now you can start getting it to it by the, um, just the network by doing IPMI commands. So there's also a page, and Patrick can probably tell you more about this. He was just helping us out with one. If you're troubleshooting the um, serial connectors, it, it's basically uh, 115, two for the baud rate, eight, one, and none. And then when you have the adapter cable you're hooked in, 
it's another way to get in there. Again, once you're in there, you can go and find where to set your IP address, your IPMI address. And this is all on IBM um, Fix Central. So now I was just going to talk to you a little bit about the code underneath it that's running it. Because when you, you, you fire these things up, uh, the first thing you're really getting to is, is that Opal firmware level. So Jeremy Kerr at Red Hat, or at Red Hat, at IBM, is uh, the main guy on it, so I've um, talked to him, gotten some of his slides, and basically what it's gonna be is you gotta understand that uh, what we did was we moved to basically using Linux right down here. So we get all the advantages of having all the device drivers, everything else, and it should be easier to maintain, keep it going. So they said uh, they wanted this library concept, um, always invoked through and in behalf of interrupts, or Linux, no interrupts, no hidden entry points. Um, when you look at the Opal interactions, it's much like anything you'd really see on anything else. You, you've got the very low layer Opal stuff, and you just build up to the Linux kernel and the workload. But again, that, that first layer, that Opal, it, it is just Linux, and um, it, it's out there on GitHub. It's an open project. Um, you, anybody can contribute to it, you can write bugs against it, uh, you can look at the code to figure out why it's doing what it's doing to see how you get around it and understand more what they're doing. So when that stuff all comes up, what you'll see, we had this, is the Pettiboot level. That, so at the Pettiboot level, that's where it's going to show you the current devices you have out there to boot from, your, your disks, your whatever. and. Um, the point we were making here was you can do an exit to the shell and you're just at a Linux shell and you can start doing your commands. So um, why were they using Linux for it? Reuse the core code. Um, it, it's just easier to get all the devices, the, the network protocols. Um, you got standard input uh, devices. So there, there's no real mode code, and it's just using all the regular libraries and utilities. So when you're in there, um, it shouldn't be learning a whole new set of commands or anything else. It should be um, very much like anything else you've seen. It's out on GitHub under Open Power and then Pettit Boot. And then there's also, um, they're out on IRC. They have mail lists. Uh, I'm out on IRC when you're having trouble. So the, the big thing that catches people though is, is right away is getting that IP address so you can get in and stuff. And um, the big thing there is we don't have that standard um, serial port. So you gotta have, either have your adapter or you hook a computer in and um, get the network changed that way. Are there any questions so far? I've been just kind of talking. So is the IPMI version that you need to use, uh, is it just the standard yeah. open IPMI or is it a custom, like is it like the Cal State? No, we, we just use the standard one that ships in Fedora and run, just works out right. the box for the um, IPMI and the ser serial over LAN so. uh, right. uh, Like the Cal one, we had uh, all sorts of fun because they never quite got their it's upstream. OEM extensions upstream. Right. Now, that, that should be up there. Now, what we're seeing is actually uh, we got some new hardware coming in. Um, and it, it's at um, beta levels, if you will. It, it's it's non-released non hardware at this point. And there they're having some problems holding the IPMI connection um, if you have too fast of a network link, it's dropping it, you lose your console. So the solution there was to put it on a slower port and then you had to have the very latest, greatest IPMI to get through. But in general, it, it's just the standard tool set. Um, 
the, the whole focus was, was, was to just use these tools that um, are out there and a lot of other people are going to. So with the open power, we're, we're seeing the whole move to the open or to the BMC and use IPMI to make it look like other boxes. Is the that idea the open BMC that's come out of Facebook? I don't know if it's open. I misspoke there. It, it, uh, it, it's yeah, it's so supposed it's to be industry standard BMC. Facebook management control yeah. later. Yeah. And um, just, just trying to keep it as much like the other boxes that you guys have and then make it so that you can administer in the same way. So did you guys replace open firmware with a Linux kernel? Is that what you did? More or less, yeah. So you, you don't really see the, the um, FSP and, and the HMC type of code and going to it that way. It's just having the uh, especially on the open powers, the BMC and then using the IPMI. So you don't quite see as much, but it does have a lot of your regular sensors, uh, fan control, heat, a bunch of those. You, if you have one, you can go look at what it is. Uh, there's web interfaces to them. Um, you know, you can just plug into them that way, the same way as you always did uh, on IBM systems and things. I think I started using IBM Well, that's before me. I started with Power Force. It's three or four. Yeah. It's been a long time. And they've changed thought even there. But the the idea is to just make it simpler. So, like even with the net booting, um, it's my understanding it's more like the Pixie boot. Then you can use a lot of those same files and that to get it all up and running. Um, it still does the boot P. Uh, you can on those systems that have DVDs, you can still do the ISO that way. I wonder if it's just my laptop. Here, let's get this down for you. Yeah. 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 So are there any other questions? So Patrick, have you run into anything else? What the weirdness that I missed for these guys? Any kind of warnings? What you'd want to watch for? Uh, well, one thing that wasn't initially trivial is that if you plug it in, it might not turn on automatically, and you need to navigate the menus to do that. Or navigate which menus? Uh, oh, you mean the system doesn't power on itself? You gotta push like the little white button on the front. Yes, even though like someone in the data center might say it's on because the lights blinking, okay. it's not actually on. Off. I've had <laughs> that a couple of times for PC up saying, "Yeah, the system is on." Then he says it's not. Right. Yep. Because a lot of these boxes will have dual power support, so you'll have a lot of little blinky lights on to be well, And also things like weight and land support, so a whole bunch of things. Right. If the system has power, you get a whole bunch of lights on, but it doesn't mean it's working. But, I mean, they should be able to tell, because it sounds like a bloody plane it's taking on. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I know Power 8s will be that way. I'm hoping that the open power boxes don't quite run the fans so much. Um, what, what I'm trying to do is get an FAQ kind of going on what people are hitting because it, it has been a couple of the same things and I have seen people um, that once they get through it the first time, it's like, oh yeah, no problem. Getting them through it the first time has, has been difficult at times. They have a kind of high learning curve to get started. And, and one, well, and, and, and that's something that I'm sure Jeremy and those guys will be looking at too because the whole point of this is to cut that down, right? I mean, it, it's we we felt we had too high a one before, and it's supposed to make it all easier. Yet we still have it, so we're going back and going to continue to. Well, look I mean, to it's I know from when I first set up the Power Apps, even though they were partially set up when I sort of took them over, um, like we had even just issues where the DC would be patching in. Like, can you go and patch this network interface in? And they would go, it's patched in. And you'd go, no, you patched in the wrong one. Okay. And they would try and patch, like, right. you'd want a standard, like, 
or running on the server network interface, and they would be patching into one of the two management interfaces, or vice versa. Yep. And, and so um, even, I think, to some degree, just like then having to Google through the IBM Central to try and find a picture of the back of the box so that you can actually work it out for yourself and send, send explicit instructions that you know, plug it into this one, it is in this location, and you basically attach an image with a red circle around where you want to plug it. <laughs> yep, and, and that's some of where I was getting to with the confusion about the HMC 1 and 2 versus what the ETH ports are. Yes. Um, the other thing I've seen is that people get in the first time, when you get in the first time, it's going to ask you to change the admin password. And people change it, and then they don't report it up. So when you're working with your um, lab folks, right? Make sure that they're writing that all down. They're going to have that, they're going to hit that, and they're going to assign it. And so now we got to get you back in. If they don't, there are ways of getting you back in, but you got to get a hold of IBM and, and they'll get you in. So that, that's been. Um, oh, and we have an older version of Patty Good. It, it's. Um, it's looking for the images in a very strange way. Uh, yeah, but that, so the version of Petty Boot that Patrick is referring to was the test non supported okay. one that okay. we had on the Power 7 Plus machine. It oh, right. gave yeah. us little Indian KVM support so that we could do a platform bringer. Right. So um, that is not something that anyone in the real world will actually run into because there was nope. only a handful of those boxes that actually existed. Right, and we are working hard to pull them out of the wild. We've sent all those back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Fedora infrastructure now I don't think has a single power seven out of their all power. Right. And um, I, again, one of the points are if you have something you want run and you don't see it on power, you know, IBM is, is motivated to see it run on power. You know, contact us, let us know. We'll get you access somehow to these machines. So the Fedora infrastructure also in the Fedora public cloud instance now has two power right. apes that run, have the ability to run both big Endian and little Endian VMs. Yep. And is it a request for resources? How do you get uh, access to that? Just open a Fedora in particular and ask for access. Right. Yeah, so, so there's actual VMs running you know, Fedora 24, presumably 23 as well if necessary, um, that is running publicly accessible in the Fedora infrastructure as well. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. So that's where the copper stuff will move right. to. Um, and and then at OSU, there's three instances, two Fedora and one OpenSUSE. So if somebody just has some short term they want to run or something like that, they can get a hold of us and we just give them a login on one of those, right? We make sure we got the right release and whatever tools, and we'll get stuff running there as well. So there, there's a number of ways we, we do this. And um, we, we're we mostly concerned with the LE versions of stuff. Uh, so typically you'll see the machines headed that way and configured that way, etc. Um, and also um, the Fedora IRC channel, so pound Fedora, Python, PPC. Yep. And the PPC Fedora mailing list as well, if you've got any queries right. um, or you're having problems with something, um, ask there. Yeah, and the, if it's not answered, there there, there are ski boot, pedi boot uh, channels like that too that um, are maintained by guys in us, Australia. So we might tell you, well, you got to wait a bit, right, and find them. But there are those channels we'll point you at, those are mail lists. And uh, they're real good about responding about it. And um, like I said, they're they're um, very active about having this all open sourced and out there that people can see it and contribute to it and such. So, any other questions? I think I got you through everything. Again, you can contact me. I can get you more information. Um, we, we um, are trying to be very active on social media. Uh, there's a person from the LTC that's um, blogging on Twitter, so you can follow updates what that way. What is LTC? Pardon? What is LTC? <sighs> LTC. It's from IBM that loves acronyms. Um, Every tech company loves acronyms. It's yes. Just so the idea. LTC is the Linux Technology Center, which I'm a part of. Um, a couple of my um, teammates are here. They're part of that. So. 
Yeah, we, we handle the Linux stuff, and we'll get you answers. So, that's really all I, I had today. My problem is, is I talk too fast through this stuff, and then I didn't have the slides for more questions or to make small print for you. So if there's nothing else, I can let you go, or you can just informally ask stuff. I'll just stay in. May I ask a stupid question? Okay. Will there be a machine which I can make power a desktop? <laughs> there, there was a plan for, um, from the yeah. Dr. Engineering Company. Right, right, right now, if you look at the press releases, you'll see that IBM is partnering with NVIDIA on GPUs. Okay, For the moment, the GPUs are being used as, 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 as just a graphical processing unit just to do vector computations. Yeah, basically, uh, the CUDA basically, stack. Basically, when I see NVIDIA and things like IBM, I think data center and their right. NVIDIA goes, just puts CPUs, GPUs right. without any help. So, wait, there, there's a, a, a bit of a split I'm seeing, and, and I gotta go back and look at this more. When I, I'm seeing boxes actually produced by IBM, they're staying with the FSP, there is no graphics, anything like that, so you go through the harder steps. Um, the open power stuff, they're, they're using the BMC, and some of them do have graphics in them because the instructions we'll have then for setting that um, IP address initially is we'll tell you to go get a USB keyboard mouse, hook a, a, a monitor up to it, and then boot it up and, and get into them. So if you're looking for workstation kind of capabilities, I would look at the open power boxes, and then who is it, Dallos? Yeah. Is starting to come up with something. Well, they started, but uh, I don't know. They yeah, I don't know if they've they been producing. That they won't be doing or continuing right. with the development because of uh, the lack of the demand. But uh, right. they have not uh, completely put uh, the project uh, on it, plan. Yeah. But if you're wondering about an official Fedora workstation, fully tested, everything like that, right now, IBM has not been pushing for that from our. Uh, in the secondary teams. We've been interested in the cloud, we've been interested in, yeah, in Docker and server. But um, I think you can it's get them running because I've got the old yellow dog system yet and every now and then you I can I mean, all them. the packages are built. Um, the, so you would have to either take the everything network and store or the server network and store and install the workstation components because we don't ship either a live image or a workstation install. Right. There's no reason why, um, if you didn't like, why you couldn't have a like power a compatible with a graphics card in a desktop machine. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, because I know in the past we had the matrix cards, we had drivers for that, and you could load those in boxes and then hook up monitors and that. But it's never been a focus. Yeah, sure. So. Yeah, I think there is still hope for the open power uh, efforts. Yeah, I, I, I keep bugging people because I want the laptop. I don't want just a, a workstation. I want the actual laptop, man. Which way is that going on? Well, Davos is not dead yet, obviously, because they find at least from what I know from their actual, uh, they are planning to continue to so grab any additional demand, if there will, will be to even produce a power rate version, they are still hoping to get a power 9 version when it comes out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's still... Uh, Who's going to do the power 9, the Talos? Yeah, they are planning to do potential update for power 9, but yeah, it's for two or more, three or you could use the But the, the interesting thing on the double stuff is uh, that they, and I don't think it was uh, possible to imagine that a couple of years ago that uh, you would choose IBM platform open or power platform for uh, private and secure workstation where everything is mm -hmm. uh, open source. So uh, that I think is really great move to, to see uh, if IBM also for uh, other side of things. I, I'd like to see it get there. I think some people could be really happy with it. Because like I say, I, I work with um, the Fedora secondary team and I'm aware of what OpenSys is doing. 
and and their build infrastructures are, are really nice on power the, the speed they get from that and stuff and I think that people could be happy with that um, I mean, the thing that I quite like about it is everything from the right utilities. Like, yeah. pretty much anything you need to configure anything on the system is all completely open source and yeah. shipped out of the box in Fedora, um, which means we're not screwing around with um, terribly updated proprietary binary block things to configure rate controllers. Right. Yep. Try another computer, or yeah, have so them try have another computer later. We change everything. So. Yep. Well, thank you for your effort. Um, you can tell how much I give presentations. <laughs> if I do this one, I'll have to get a different laptop and learn to run it. Maybe I'll give you my computer. It's all over. They don't need to see the slides. They weren't pretty anyways. I'll work you on that next time. You can just post them to the website, Mark. Yeah. They just got all blue penguins all over the place. So. We like that. But yeah, sorry about the lack of slides and, and such. I hope you did get something out of this. And like I said, if anybody was in on the server meeting, one of the big things I want to get running on power right now is OpenQA or Fedora. I think that additional testing would be awesome. It should work. Well, yeah. Adam. Different systems run on well, the options. Yes. They claim. Nope, they do. I, I know for a fact that they run it on, on power because I work with Dinar. But Adam was telling me something about the scheduler in engine and my comment was basically yours um, it, it runs on open so, so what's the problem here so Adam's the main problem is we don't have hardware tied up to it and the way that it I mean it's triggered on composers the primary and we would need to set up something to trigger on the secondary composers but there well, shouldn't that, be that, any insurmountable problems to do well it. I mean that problem will go away in the C case point. with probably Fedora 27 right. Why Fedora 27? Because um, where I put in a proposal, which will be going out to the mailing list later on today, of redefining the secondary architectures, where basically all the dual okay. side of things will be merged into a single instance of Koji. Oh, okay. At which point, basically, the nightly compose will run for all the architectures, and we put out the primary deliverables into one directory and the secondary ones for the different architectures into a, another set of directories okay. at which point the, the, the definition of secondary arch will be where the where we deliver and ship the output oh, rather right. than you know where we build it right um, I mean, effectively at the moment i686 is secondary arch except we can't kick it out because we still want it for more you well, it's still needed for multi lid for certain cases. Yeah. And then, um, like, there's, it then frees up, like, the whole concept of Encoji Shadow and that right. sort of stuff goes away, which means the vast amounts of time that people like Dan and myself and various others spend on that can then be put into dealing with architecture breakages. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering if it was something like that or if it was that you're going to need more hardware to do it or something else tying it to being a year out. Patrick always needs more power. <laughs> uh, than um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, one of the interesting things with the way OpenQA works is that you basically need to have dedicated hardware currently for it to run on. Yep. It would be nice if there was some enhancements to open. QA that were done where it could just run that, say, from an OpenStack instance. Because, I mean, it is just spinning up VMs 
um, and that way we could get away from having the dedicated sets of hardware just for OpenQA and move to it just consuming all the various different architectures which we would then put into the Fedora over the stack instance like the power boxes that we have there um, and it could do just use the OpenStack API to spin up, deploy, test and tear down that right. sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, OpenSUSE has a dedicated machine for theirs, yeah. so I'm not surprised. Yeah, so at the moment it doesn't support that, but I think that would be a, for OpenQA a good um, enhancement. And then um, you're saying the copper. So put the word out for that stuff. You know, and if you know people that are, are interested in power and looking for it, um, you know, let me know so that we can find a way, whether it's copper, whether it's a university system, whatever, we, we can get them on it. All right. I'll turn off the recording and thank you all.